What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including WWE confirms the return of an old show, Roman Reigns returning to full-time competition, WWE locks down another top superstar, WWE getting aggressive behind the scenes, more surprises in the Bloodline saga, is AEW Rampage getting cancelled, Rhea Ripley cried after this moment, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our top story looks at WWE confirms the return of an old show in December. A WWE Days News is the WWE's announcement that its former Saturday Night Television special Saturday Night's main event is returning. According to a WWE press release, WWE and NBC announced the return of the iconic Saturday Night's main event, which will air live on Saturday, December 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC and simulcast on Peacock. The special will be held at the Norso Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Long Island, New York, the site of the first ever Saturday Night's main event. Ringside News' Andrew Ravens is reporting the special will air quarterly. The original Saturday Night's main event, which debuted in 85, played a key role in the WWF's expansion during the rock and wrestling era as it provided a new platform for the WWE to attract fans and help it market house shows and pay-per-views. What made the original show so special was that it aired marquee matches at a time when fans typically had to go to house shows or order pay-per-views to see top stars battling other top stars. How the WWE uses Saturday Night's main event in an era where weekly television features big matches should prove very interesting. Next up, Roman Reigns returning to full-time competition. Now, there's a big takeaway from the Saturday Night's main event announcement as Roman Reigns is advertised for the show, along with Cody Rhodes, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan and Seth Rollins. Roman's appearance makes sense as he's arguably the WWE's top act. Next up, WWE locks down another top superstar. The WWE signing spree continues as Sheamus has signed a new deal to stay in the company. Pat McAfee announced the signing on his podcast as we're incredibly lucky to announce that Mr. Banger after Banger himself, Sheamus, the big fella, has officially signed an extension with the WWE. Sheamus is the latest longtime WWE superstar to sign a new deal to stay in the company and as we'll see in our next story, several others are on WWE's wish list. As next up, WWE getting aggressive behind the scenes. Now that Sheamus has signed a new WWE deal, the WWE is looking to keep several other talents in the company for the foreseeable future. Now, according to a recent report from PW Insider Elite, the WWE has been very aggressive about locking in deals for several talents, in this case Nia Jax, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. All three signings make sense from a booking perspective as all three women are working main event programs right now. Jax has seen her star rise after a 2023 return, with Nia enjoying a push and more importantly, showing she's improving in the ring. As for Rhea and Liv, both are now firmly entrenched in the main event thanks to Rhea's work in the Judgment Day and Liv's heel turn. The WWE has a large roster and while some fans and critics think it's too big, the company is adamant about keeping its top stars in the promotion for a long time. Do you think any of these superstars might leave the WWE? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Mick Foley wants to thank Vince McMahon. What does Mick Foley think about Vince McMahon following the allegations made against him in Janelle Grant's lawsuit? Foley recently addressed the controversy during an appearance at Comic Con Northern Ireland. Here are some excerpts from the conversation as transcribed by Pro Wrestling. I genuinely liked him, Vince McMahon. I mean, my relationship was never the same with him after I left WWE and went to TNA for three years. But to this day, I'm still trying to find an address to write to him just to thank him and, you know, for taking a chance on me. I think all of us are a combination of good traits and bad traits and I hope your good traits outweigh your bad traits and it seems perhaps that Vince got it backwards there for a little while. Like many top stars, Mick Foley has a complicated relationship with McMahon, but it's clear Foley appreciates McMahon bringing him into the WWE and helping him reach to the top. While Foley interacted with McMahon during his time in the company, it's unknown if he ever heard any rumors of inappropriate behavior. Foley addressed the allegations while discussing some work call a case of separating the art from the artist, appreciating McMahon's contributions to the wrestling industry without any alleged bad acts influencing his appreciation. I'm going to hold off judgment until I see the... But I think one thing that's fortunate is whatever he did or did not do, I think many of us are allowing that to mess with our memories. He was instrumental in creating some of those memories, so I'm choosing to appreciate him until I learn more about what may have gone down. A rumor has it that the Netflix docuseries will bury McMahon, painting him in a very bad light. 
Nevertheless, it's important to remember that as far as the Janelle Grant lawsuit goes, McMahon has maintained his innocence and vowed to fight the case. What do you think of Mick's take on things? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, more surprises in the Bloodline saga. Jey Uso is paying close attention to the Bloodline's current Civil War storyline despite not being on SmackDown. Speaking with Metro UK's Alistair McGeorge, Jay opened up about the group and how things have been playing out. I'm looking forward to the Bloodline storyline as much as you all are, because I'll be honest, I don't know what we're going to do, I don't know what's going to happen. Jay addressed a question on many fans' minds, how much longer until he finds himself embroiled in Roman's war against Solo Sokoa and Solo's version of the Bloodline? I don't know how we, how they're going to intertwine me back in there. Sammy would be my first pick, right? It only makes sense. Hey, we might have other family members. More surprises, man. I recently observed that the second generation wrestler Hikuleo could join Solo and company, which makes sense as he's related to Tama Tonga and Tongaloa. If and when Jay reunites with Roman remains unknown, but if the rumors of the Bloodline vs Bloodline War Games match at Survivor Series prove true, fans won't have to wait long. Next up is AEW Rampage getting cancelled. Is the AEW Warner Brothers Discovery deal ever going to happen, and if so, could it lead to the end of AEW Rampage? That could be the case as Puck News recently reported that AEW is shopping Shockwave, a new wrestling show. The WWE's former SmackDown rights partner Fox might pick up the show, which has led to speculation from the Wrestling Observer. Orange report was that AEW would air on TNT, TBS and True TV twice a week. Now, if there are only two shows, Dynamite and Collision, and three stations listed, that would seem to indicate that True would get reruns or simulcasts. True is being rebranded as a sports station from 8 to 11 p.m. each night. A rumor has it that the AEW WBD deal will no longer be an exclusive one, which means AEW could try to get other networks, cable stations, or even streaming services to pick up an AEW show. They added, this would confirm what another source indicated to us this past week that Rampage would not be continued, and that the third show, likely called AEW Shockwave, given AEW just filed for the trademark for that term, would be the show being shopped around to Fox and likely others. While Rampage started off strong, including an episode where CM Punk debuted in AEW, the show quickly flamed out into a one hour who's that of AEW, with fans having little reason to tune in and the ratings showed that. If AEW is shopping a new show around, one would think the promotion would feature marquee talent in order to attract fans. Next up, Rhea Ripley cried after this. Rhea Ripley portrays a strong character on TV, but she's not afraid to admit that a recent storyline made her cry her eyes out backstage. During a chat with the wrestling classic, The Eradicator revealed, The Judgment Day was really family to me. It really was. It has helped my career so much more than I could actually put into words. That was when I started opening up and feeling comfortable going out there and being in front of the crowd. I had the boys and I could fall back on. Rhea's time in The Judgment Day elevated her into the main event and gave fans a chance to appreciate her ring work as they enjoyed her new persona. As for her emotions, it was really emotional for me. I saw something come out about the Judgment Day members, a specific one crying backstage after everything. I'm not ashamed of it. That was me. I was upset. The last two and a half years of my life has changed now. I can't go back to that. They're all my boys and my family. It was really sad. Ripley explained that while she was sad that her time in the group had ended, she's excited about the new opportunities ahead of her. Next up, CM Punk appears on NXT. An exciting night on NXT as CM Punk surprised fans by appearing in the ring. His first official appearance since his WWE return and interacting with various talents, chief among them NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez, who interrupted Punk's promo. He admired the chip she had on her shoulder, a chip like the one he once had that led to his success. Punk warned Perez not to underestimate Julia, which led to the newly arrived superstar appearing and reminding Perez their showdown is just weeks away. And finally, the end of an era for WWE. Last but not least, it's a sad day for wrestling fans as the WWE's former headquarters Titan Towers has now taken down its official WWE logo and is now fully up for sale. The WWE moved into its new corporate headquarters earlier this year and while the sale was expected, it's still painful for fans who have had so many memories from the WWE's days in the building, including during the pandemic when they held the Money in the Bank matches in the building with superstars scrambling to the top floor to secure the Money in the Bank briefcase. But there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.